Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a sort of 6x6 paper pad tutorial. I will be using a 6x6 paper pad, but I won't be using the whole thing. However, I will be creating cards that cause minimal scraps to kind of show you some ideas for using up some pattern paper. I'm also going to be using the Avriel Snow Fun stamp set. I colored a bunch of images a couple of months ago. Sometimes when I don't have a lot of time to craft, I still find coloring really relaxing and it's something that I find you can do in a variety of situations. Like it's something that you can pull to the kitchen table if that's more convenient. You don't have to find some time to get away. You don't have to have all your supplies. You can just pick out a couple of markers and stamp a couple of images and just go for it. So um, I have some images that I want to use up. So I won't be showing the Copic coloring today as I didn't record that, but I hope that the the video is still helpful to you. And um, All the Copic coloring was pretty simple. There is a C marker used on the snowmen so they aren't just left white. It gives them just a little bit more dimension and interest. And then I just picked a set of green markers. I believe it was like the G9s and a set of red markers, which was likely the set of uh, the 30s, like 3, 7, 5, and... Three, two, no, three, five, seven, nine, probably. Um, but basically, just really simple choices, and I use them throughout all of the snowmen because it made things faster. With the paper pad, I had used some of it before, and as you can see in the top left corner, I don't actually have a lot of scraps left because I do try to be pretty efficient with my pattern paper use. Now I was really bad at it before, and I still sometimes just you know do what I want, but. I'm, I'm trying to not leave as many scraps because then I find they don't get used. I picked a couple of pattern papers where there were still two of full sheets and they are double sided. This is the scrapbook.com exclusive photo play best of Christmas paper pad. And I really liked its little bit non-traditional Christmas colors and it really went well with the snowman colors I chose. I'm going to my sketch book. Um, that's used in a slightly different way here. It's a book, a binder full of sketches. It's an Amy Tan binder. I thought that was really inspiring. I could have just used any old binder um, and reuse something, but because it's on display in my craft room, I did opt for this little bit fancier um, binder. She has a really cute collection. So I printed all the MFT sketches and some other sketches, but the MFTs I really recommend and I will link below. And I just kind of flip through them to get some ideas going. I don't use them for every single card in this video or in general, but a lot of times when I'm starting with a paper pad, it helps me to just sort of get going with my ideas. So as I usually do with 6x6 paper pad tutorials, I will make a blog post so that you can see all of the measurements for each of the cards. But I'm not going to try to say them all on screen because I'll often mess up. Um, and I think that it's just easier for you to be able to go over there and get the actual measurements instead of getting confused. But I did decide to pull in a die set for this um, tutorial because it can add a little bit of interest. I did make these nice, you know, stamped images. And so if I didn't use dies, I think that would still be fine. But um, it, it does just add a little something. You could, of course, just cut rectangles, and I will measure them out, and you can do that. I'm using a Lawn Vaughn stitched snowflake die on this card, and I, used, I pulled in some like foil paper from my stash, or sorry, I think it's glitter paper. Um, but I won't be doing that again. I kind of was like, afterwards, I, after I did it, I was kind of like, ooh, that's a little bit different than what I intend to do with my 6x6 paper pad tutorial, so I hope you will uh, give me a pass on that one. But I am the kind of person who does keep glitter cardstock on hand, even though I don't keep a lot of plain cardstock on hand, because I think it is special enough. You can't, like, with regular plain cardstock, I can usually sort of create my own with some ink or whatever, but you can't do that as easily for glitter cardstock. And I have found a lot of um, basically cheaper sources of glitter cardstock that's still really good quality. Um, like, for instance, right now, the Target Dollar Spot has some pretty nice quality glitter paper. So if that's something that you're into, they have the six by six. Now, 
with my cards, when I was doing that layering up on that first card there, I knew I was going to cover a bunch of that buffalo plaid paper. So I took one of my die cuts and I cut the center out of it so that I then had an element to use on my next card. I don't always do this. If I'm really just trying to get through a pattern paper pack, I'm more likely to just let it be and cover up some pattern paper. But in this instance, I only had a few sheets. I think I had, there's five snowmen and then there's a set of birds. And I only had, I think, four sets of complete paper left. So, or no, it is five. Um, so I was like, I felt like I was kind of be a little bit limited and therefore I wanted to be a little bit more conservative with my pattern paper than I might otherwise be. Um, if I didn't mention it, I will also link, if I used an MFT sketch or any sketch for a card, that will also be referenced in the coordinating blog post. For a lot of these, I am going to make a pretty traditional background where I'm going to have it four by five and a quarter. And then I'm going to put it, they're all A2 size cards. So that's what I cut that sheet at. Um, sometimes, again, if I'm trying to maybe extend a paper pad a little bit, you could go slightly um, smaller in that measurement. And that would give you a bit more pattern paper. But I chose not to do that today. So, you know, some ways I was conserving paper, other ways not. Um, what I will say is this, one of the things I liked about this pattern paper and I thought that it would work well besides the fact that I think it just coordinated really well with the snowmen, which I already had, which was super important, is that it has a lot of black and white in it, which for me is a great choice of a collection because I, like I said before, I don't keep a lot of pattern paper on hand, or sorry, a lot of colored cardstock on hand. I keep white, black, and I have a few random packs. Um, so with that in mind, when I can use white and black to add layers or cut die, you know, die cut panels, that really works well for me personally. This particular pattern paper pack is also not true six by, like when you pull one of the sheets out, it's actually a little bit bigger than six by six because there's that extra bit at the top, but it has the hole in it. And usually I find working around that not to be a very big deal because if you're going to layer things up, like in this instance, there was that hole at the top of that uh, black strip that went in the background. I just placed it on my card such that that black hole was covered and it allowed me to basically get a little bit more value out of the paper pad, get a little bit more, you know, uh, width or I guess it's height because the way the pattern paper works, but... Um, just kind of a tip there. Although I will say when you pull this out of the pattern paper pad, the top has like little like fuzzies left. It's not like a perfectly straight. And so I usually do try to trim that off and give it a nice finished look. So here on my third card, I did not pull out my sketches again because I'm instead of being inspired by the sketches, I'm really going to be focusing more on the scraps that are left. However, um, if that doesn't really work for you, you can kind of like look at your scraps and or take your scraps and pull them to your book of sketches and kind of see, okay, well, this sketch has about this size rectangle or this one needs a rectangle that I have. I have a rectangle and then a strip. And so I see that in this particular sketch. Um, it's a strategy that I use sometimes, but again, I like to try to be motivated by well, what do I have left. Here I'm also pulling in a banner die. Um, I tend to pull in what I consider basic dies a lot when I'm doing six by six patterned paper tutorials because I think it adds interest, but I also realize that you don't need them to be successful in recreating the cards. If you like the look of the banner, but you don't have a banner die, you do not have to go purchase one. You can simply, um, you know, cut your rectangle with your pattern paper, sorry, with your paper trimmer, and then cut that little triangle out of the end. A tip for cutting that little banner end would be to cut down the center of the strip and then cut in from the sides. If I start from the sides, I usually am not as successful. So again, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that that paper is a little bit wider if I leave the hole and it gives it a little bit more weight on the card, but I am going to cover it up so that it doesn't really factor in. I'm going to be, um, something that I liked is the 
one of the pieces of pattern paper that I had left. So this, um, I think it's called a buffalo plaid in the background or just a plaid, I guess. Um, I don't know why I'm thinking buffalo. Anyway, the plaid, the gray plaid in the background, it ha the other side of it is a solid red. And that was one of the reasons that I thought I would be able to easily use up this paper is because if I needed just a little bit of red for sentiments like I'm using here, I would have it and I wouldn't need to go find a cardstock that matched or make a cardstock. Of course, I could use black and do some white heat embossing, but again, that's some extra supplies and I do generally try to keep these pretty basic. Or I could have done it in white and still stamped it in black and I think that would have looked great too. So as you can see, I am making two of every single one of these cards and that's because I had two of each of these um, pattern papers and images. So once I create one design, I can use it twice. That uh, gray plaid paper, the big strip that was left, I was able to work around the hole and die cut one small rectangle and one small square. So that is the the other wonky wavy rectangles from Cat Scrappiness and the wonky wavy squares. Again, I'll just leave you measurements and you could find the, a die set in your collection that is similar or just cut the squares if you wanted to recreate these. I know that not a lot, not everyone thinks that you should recreate someone else's project exactly. I don't mind if that's what someone wants to do, if they want to use the same or similar designs. The way I figure it, as long as they're not taking credit for it as like an original design, but also like I'm following MFT sketches. So it's not necessarily my original design either. I don't know. I, I think I've heard from people that they like to recreate the cards or be inspired by a few cards, like maybe recreate a few and um, just putting it out there that I think that's totally okay. Please always feel free to, you know, even directly copy the cards if that's what you want to do, if that's what gives you some uh, joy, makes your crafting time fun and easy, that's why I leave the measurements. So with this card, again, using that full width, covering up that circle, that um, pattern paper with the ornaments was definitely not my favorite. Like I thought they were really bold and difficult to use. Luckily, the back of it was another plaid, but I needed to be able to use both sides in order to complete the card because it's the, you know, the background, the reverse is the ornaments. So in order to make the card without scraps. And so by, if I take a pattern paper that I'm not super, super thrilled with and I make it a smaller element on the card, it usually works pretty well. So here is, I have the birds left and the little squares that I cut out. And then all those scraps you see, that's it. Like it's not a lot. So I'm not gonna be able to cut a big piece of pattern paper like I've used on a lot of the other cards. Here is my scrap card. I'm gonna take my um, card bases, which are almost always cut with um, really thick cardstock so that it works out to be uh, like substantial enough that if it, I show a lot of it, it's okay. However, in this instance, I'm not done with the pattern paper pad. So I thought that I could pull in one of the single sheets so that I could still make two of the same card. And, but I did still say, you know, I don't want to create a lot of scraps. I don't want to have a lot of scraps left. So if I'm going to pull in this sheet, I'm going to try to use as much of it as possible. So what I decided to do here is I cut it directly in half so it's you know three inches wide and then I placed it down to cover as much of the card base as possible and then trimmed off that edge so I only had a small scrap and therefore I could pull that in easily so it's not exactly a traditional scrap card in the sense that I did you know want to add a bit more so I am going to use up a lot of those scraps but I did pull in this big chunk but I pulled it in without causing you know a another chunk to be wasted I hope that makes sense like so yeah, part of my goal was to use up the couple of sheets of pattern paper I picked out at the beginning, but I didn't restrict myself to only those as long as I wasn't creating a bunch of scraps. So here I'm trying to be really creative to cover that hole that's created by um, using the other side, using that scrap. So I'm just kind of like 
This is what I do a lot with scrap cards, and I actually think it works out pretty well if you have a really good coordinating collection, is to just layer a bunch of strips around your focal panel. Um, probably want to stop at about five different patterns, not no go much more than that, but though here you see I'm like trying to pull in any last little strip I think I can get to work. Um, but having that little collection tends to make that focal panel uh, a bit more of the star of the show because it has all those patterns around it. Uh, but if the collection coordinates really well, which they tend to do, these are, you know, very talented designers making these collections, then um, it tends to work out without looking super, super cluttered. So what I will say with this particular pattern paper, it is actually a mix of two different collections. So some of the colors are a little bit more like off um, in terms of one of the collections has a lot more red and green, whereas the other collection is a little bit more about the, the blacks. So there's this like gnome collection and the other one where the ornaments are included, which I actually like because when you get a six by six pattern paper. If you get like the doodle bugs, everything coordinates and that's awesome and like it looks great. I love it. But sometimes by the time I'm done using the pattern paper collection, I'm a little bored. Like I'm happy it's all gone because I don't want to go back to it because I use so many papers. So this collection having a combo of two collections and I think that there's a couple of these at scrapbook.com where you can basically uh, they, like they pull in two collections together. I think that that actually can be a really fun option. So here I actually didn't have some of the same little scraps left. So I had to create another little, I guess like vignette, I think is the word for it, or like grouping of pattern paper scraps to add some um, substantialness to those backgrounds. So here are all the completed cards. My original snowman or snowflake card. This one where I used two snowmen and then later on I kind of like regretted that I put two snowmen on it because I was like I probably could have made another card but I think it's really um I like the way that it turned out. I think they're really cute together and I don't think I need to always try to make the most cards but then I used the two little birds instead of adding them as accents. I let them kind of be the star of their own cards. So that is it for my cards today. Here are the scraps that are left. To me, not bad. I don't feel bad about tossing those in the recycling bin. Because I'm not done with this pattern paper, I might just leave them in there because maybe they'll make a good sentiment strip one day or something like that. But if that were all that left of the pattern paper pad, that's fine for the recycling bin. To me, I feel like I got really good value out of my paper. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more craft tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links to all of the products that I used in the video description below. And please leave me a comment letting me know which of these cards was your favorite. Have an awesome day. Bye.